Hey there, Man Guy Addicts. It's Ken Wilford here at Van Again. Come at you live and direct in our Van Again, Van Again li weekly live stream, which hasn't been super weekly lately because of, uh, I don't know, just being the winter time. Get the winter time blahs and blues and blees, all those B things that happen in the winter time. But this week, it's been picking up. We've been getting more busier with orders and things like that. Um, and so we just wanted to say, you know, get start trying to start this back up again. Um, so what are we going to talk about this week? Well, we want you folks to number one, say hi to us when you come into the chat, and number two, uh, you know, any questions you have about van stuff, we can try to answer and help you guys out. Uh, one of the things I wanted to kind of touch base with a little bit is that uh, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but yesterday was the anniversary of the original bus being produced in March 8th of 1950. So that means that the bus is actually, uh, was it 68 years old? Does that sound right? Sounds right to me. Okay, so do your math later. But yeah, so bus is 68 years old. Happy birthday to the bus. Uh, if you want to celebrate, send me large amounts of money and I'll send you one of my little bus calendars that I got. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of funny. We got a ton of orders last weekend, so thank you guys for that. Uh, no one mentioned anything about anything. Like, they didn't mention, like, Ken, I would really love to have a bus calendar. They didn't mention, Ken, I would really like to have a Volkswagen mug or some German hand cleaner. So nobody gets any. I don't know. I mean, if we want to do it, we can extend it to this week. I still have some calendars. I still have... Some mug that still has some hand cleaner. I'd love to give it to you guys. So, again, let's try it again this week. If anyone in this weekend, this is going to be like the 9th, 10th, 11th-ish, okay? If you place an order for over $100 and you would like a calendar, let me know. If you would like a Volkswagen mug, let me know. Or if you like some German hand cleaner, let me know, and I will... Put it in with your stuff, okay? If you, you know, so that's basically it. So let's see if anybody can possibly order something this weekend over from our live stream. We'll see what happens, okay? So what are you guys' thoughts? The Volkswagen bus is 68 years old. Uh, it retired three years ago. It's living in Florida. What? <laughs> I mean, what are your thoughts on the age of the Volkswagen bus? Uh, I'm getting, here's what I've been seeing happening. So... The Volkswagen New Beetle has been revised uh, at least once since it was brought out in like 1997. So the New Beetle is like 21 years old at this point. Like it's older than this right here. And uh, you know, basically what the what the guys at Volkswagen have said is that the New Beetle is fixing to be over. Okay, the New Beetle has become the new, new Beetle. And the guy's like, I'm not going to call it the new, 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 new Beetle. So there's going to be basically no Beetle. Okay, again. So we lost the Beetle here in the U.S. in like 1983. It was like 79 was supposed to be the last year, but then they did some convertibles for a few years. So we lost it then. We got it back in 97. Now we're fixing to lose it again for, I think, 2019. So if you want a new Beetle, and you want it to be a new new Beetle, then you want to go down to your local Volkswagen dealership, say, please shut up and take my money, and then just kind of do like this, you know, to them with your money. That's how people give money to other people now, I guess. So kind of like an ATM machine that's broken. <laughs> Do that. And they'll take that money and they'll give you the newest Beetle, bam, that you can possibly get. And then be happy, super happy because next year it's, you can't get that again. And they won't let you get it. Now, what I have heard, though, so that's sad news for every person who loves new Beetles, which, you know, they're fine. She has one. She likes it. But uh, it's good news. Why well, I'm talking about this, I'm rambling. 
It's good news for us, people that love the Volkswagen bus and the Vanagon and all these other bus things. It's really good news for us. Why, Ken? Why would you say that? Well, I would say that because it means that Volkswagen is is relaunching itself. Okay. And part of its relaunch is this whole push to electric vehicles, electric power vehicles. And the poster child for that is the thing that we've mentioned multiple times on this program, which is the Buzz ID, which is basically an electric power Volkswagen bus. So in other words, the nostalgia card there, they played the nostalgia card with the Beetle as much as they can possibly play it. Uh, they, they, you know, resurrected it and then beat it back to death again. So now the new thing they're going to resurrect to beat it to death is the Volkswagen bus. <laughs> okay. So we can look forward to, you know, maybe another uh, 20 years after the buzz ID comes out in uh, 2022. We can look forward to 20 years of them flogging that. <laughs> Yay. Okay. But I mean, the so you're saying, why is that good news for me? I'm not going to run out and purchase a buzz ID. I don't have uh, $40,000 or whatever it's going to cost. $35,000. I mean, anytime that one of these new retro vehicles come out, right? What always happens? The stuff that it's imitating, people get new interest in it. It sparks more interest. So I think it's good overall for the Vatagon bus community. I think it's going to help even get more interest and bring more interest into the community. So there you go. All right. So that's uh, my little ramble on that. See, we got. What do you guys think about that? Am I right? Wrong? Up? Down? Left? Right? A B B A? Start. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's continue on. I was reading a. I watched a show the other day that has a man in it who is president. Um, his name is Kiefer Sutherland. Have you heard of this man? Uh, I vaguely have recollect him. And anyway, uh, Kiefer is playing the president of the United States. Uh, and he is actually doing a really great job in this show. It's called Designated Survivor. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this show before. Uh, anyway, there is a scene in Designated Survivor. Not this week's episode, but the previous week's episode where a Vanagon is seen for about two seconds. So there you go. Watch that entire episode and see if you can find it. But it's actually like right in the center of the screen and it's like good sized. Uh, basically in the episode, they're in Cuba. Okay. Um, and these guys like, uh, what do you want to say? Trying to, I keep thinking hijack, but that ain't right. They 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 grab these people, whatever word that is. Kidnap. Kidnap, yes. <laughs> See, young people have to tell us words. We can't remember. Oh my gosh. Kid, they kidnap this group of people. They hold them hostage, and it's kind of ridiculous. But at one point, I can't I kept thinking hijack. I'm like, well, that is not the right word. Kidnap. And <laughs> the, at one point, this woman's getting away. Uh, and spoiler alert, she doesn't get away. But the bad guys drive up in a Vanagon, right? Of course, they always are are evil in their evil Vanagons. <laughs> but they drive up and stop her from escaping. Uh, if she ran just a little bit faster, she could probably escape them. <laughs> because, you know. It, it was kind of funny, too. I'm like, after the, I saw it, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, Cuba, this is a country where all the cars there are like from the 50s. So, if there was a, a Vanagon or a Volkswagen van there, wouldn't it be like a bus? But anyway, you know, it's probably like one of those error things. What we'll they, I have to call Kiefer tonight and we'll talk about it. Okay. Because we, a weekly call to him. Okay. We'll call him up and uh, I'm sure he will fix it later. We'll like kind of edit that part out later. Um. All right. So, let's continue on. All right. Another. Thing that I got slightly excited about, but then lost all will to live after learning about was um, I don't know if you guys know a person called Terry Hatcher. Have you ever heard of this person? She, when I was younger, okay, my wife and I watched a show called uh, Lois and Clark: The Adventures of Superman. 
Okay. When we were dating. So I have like nice memories of this show. We we're watching it while we're sitting in my in-laws living room uh, with like, you know, this much space between us. Cause that's how you date people. All right. But if you didn't learn that in the past, now, you know, this much room, see, oh, she's right here. So I like this. Okay. So anyway, as we're sitting there with our arms crossed like this and we're like this, that's exactly how it was. Um, <laughs> we're watching the show. Okay. So we enjoyed that show a lot. And um, then I was reading this thing about she was telling people she was okay. This is fast forward to now. Okay. Now Terry Hatcher is like in her 50s. Um, and there was a, like one of those papers that you see when you check out the grocery store said Terry Hatcher's broke living in a van down by the river. Okay. Well, in a way, they're right. I mean, I don't think she's broke. But she does actually own a Volkswagen bus. Okay, so I got excited about that. I'm like, wow, Terry Hatcher owns a Volkswagen bus. Now, when I, you know, people call me on the phone, I'm not only listening for the voice of Jerry Seinfeld. I'm also listening for the voice of Terry Hatcher. Maybe she will call. I need a wheel bearing. You know, I mean, you never know. Oh. It could happen. I mean, when Kiefer calls, he never asks for that stuff, but... I don't think he has a Volkswagen bus yet. Um, but after he sees this video, he will definitely buy one. So um, Terry Hatcher has a Volkswagen bus. It's actually a nice one. It's a, probably like a 79-ish. What? Uh, it's not a Westie. Okay? It's a looks like an ASI R Riviera conversion to me. Or perhaps a country home. Uh, anyway... So I was excited. She has a YouTube show. I don't know if you guys are, know about this or not. Okay, so I am going to tell you about it. It is called Van Therapy. So I thought, wow, this is cool. This is Terry Hatcher is doing some kind of reality show where she lives in a van bus thing and, so, and travels places. I thought that was what it was going to be about. Uh, sadly, it is not about that. Sadly, it is her trying to give people like mental health therapy in her bus. And I watched like two minutes of it. And I was like, you know what? Wow. I'm uncomfortable now. So I had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get a chance and you want to look at it, it's on YouTube. So you can watch it for free. Anytime you want to watch it. Maybe some of you have watched it and you were on a bridge getting ready to jump off. You had your phone. You were watching YouTube. Of course, everybody does that right before they're fixing to jump off the bridge. And you watched her show, and it saved your life. You never know. Okay? So, uh, or maybe you were on the bridge, and it made you jump off. I don't know. Then the net caught you. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, may, you might want to check it out. All right. So, now that we've destroyed any chance of ever having Terry Hatcher buy parts from us, <laughs> do we have any comments from the comment section? Uh, just everybody saying hi. Um, Steve Reuter's here. Peter Bonici is here. I know Billy Shepard must know, like, Terry Hatcher. <laughs> he knows everybody. Like, Billy Shepard knows everybody. Like, I just have to mention anyone's name. But, oh, I know that. I've known him for, like, 20 years. Hmm. Have you ever mentioned Kiefer Sutherland? And the real part is that he has actually known them for 20 years. I haven't mentioned Kiefer, but I will do that <laughs> next time. Because my wife's last name, before she got married, is... Sutherland. Bam. Nailed it. Except for the See? Fact, except hold on. Keeper's last oh, name doesn't have an now. doesn't have an O in it. She's gonna ruin it. See, we had to change they had to change it to like, you know, they didn't want to get caught up in the whole <laughs> celebrity know, paparazzis whatever. And stuff. So they, they had to, to add an O to my mom's right. last name just so they she They wanted wouldn't. to avoid the paparazzis. Yeah. Get ambushed so by the they, paparazzi. They changed the, they tricked them. <laughs> they moved to rural Georgia. And they changed their name to slightly different spelling. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, but yes, my wife's last name is Sutherland. So there you go. Costas is here. Oh boy. Indigenous Pathway says was talking about the Buzz ID, and he's mm -hmm. like, "My initial thoughts: Electric is great. Autonomous driving, me no like. No ground clearance, bad. No camping quarters yeah. inside. Stove, fridge, bedding is also bad. No pop top is also bad." I mean, I would say once it comes out, there might be a camper version of it. Um, and I see what you're saying. They actually made the Buzz ID. I actually watched. 
this one show. I think it's called Recharge or something like that. It's a show about electric cars and stuff. And this guy had the most comprehensive, like, Buzz ID video I've ever seen. Like, usually when you see a Buzz ID video, it's, like, two minutes long. They're like, hey, this Buzz ID showed up at a beach with surfers, and now we're going to see some surfing, and then we're going to see this car just vaguely from angles, and that's it. No, this guy had, like, a 20-minute video. I think it's called Recharge or something like that, and it's an electric car show, and... So anyway, the guy got to drive it. Then the guy who designed it came onto the show, and he sat there and talked to him for like 10 minutes. Then this other guy who works, he's like one of the Volkswagen president guys that's in charge of the electrification situation. He came on. They were sitting in the Buzz ID talking for like another 10 minutes. I mean, this was like a great show. So... They talked about what was going on with it. Yes, it is actually made so that the steering wheel can go, like, go into the dashboard and become one with the dashboard. Like, the guy was driving it, and the and it looked kind of ridiculous. Like, the the steering wheel is, like, worse than an Xbox controller or something. Like, my Xbox controller would actually feel more natural driving <laughs> than this terrible, like, steering wheel that looks like... I mean, it made, like, you know, the Night Industries 2000 steering wheel look awesome. Look ergodynamic in comparison to this. It's like a giant chunk of, car, like, plastic rectangle-looking thing. But that's the reason. It's supposed to, like, go into the dash, and then you're, it's supposed to drive itself. Okay? So, I know some people have mixed feelings on that. The problem I have with the autonomous driving, or what I like about it i guess you could say is that we have a, an aging population right we have an aging population so people that really shouldn't be driving anymore they could get into an autonomous car and go to town and go to the store okay i mean where i live it's out in the middle of nowhere some of you guys have been here you know what it's like if i called a taxi they'd be like all right we can come get you. It's going to be $20 to come get you, take you to town, and then another $20 to get back. Or maybe more. I have no idea. I've never called a taxi here. But it's, it would be a lot of money. Okay? Autonomous thing would be way cheaper. And it would be a way for older folks to get around, maybe people that are handicapped, disabled, get around. That's the good side of it. Okay? And then there's people that are just completely retarded that shouldn't drive. Yeah. Those are the people that call Ubers. We should, like, as soon as autonomous vehicles become a thing, we should make, like, people drive, like, texting and driving, instant ban from driving ever again in your life. Or maybe for, like, 10 years. So by the time they drive again, they've completely forgotten how to do it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, drunken driving again, boom, ban from driving. Like, you have to drive autonomous like in an autonomous vehicle from now on because apparently you don't you can't handle the responsibility i don't know what do you guys think about that that's me rambling uh, i'm rambling on that stuff but people like people like the rambles my brother's channel is all it is is rambles oh let's not get started and he has like four thousand people on his thing I actually have, they have like, five thousand five thousand see all he does is ramble the entire uh episode <laughs> Let's not talk about your brother um, with his ramblings. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Peter Bernici was saying, I'm seeing super capacitors replacing batteries three-minute mm. charge time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, the battery situation has always been holding things back the whole time. So there's a bunch of new technologies. I mean, oh, a couple of years ago, they were talking about some kind of liquefied stuff, carbon stuff that has an electric charge in it that you could, like, actually pump it into a thing and it's like electric electricity but these carbon nanotubes or something and you're like pumping it in there and that's recharging it and it's just like filling up gas uh you know so there's all kinds of weird ideas the the super capacitors would be the best idea because you could recharge them very very quickly um just recently they've been changing the um or they've been experimenting with some new uh chemistry of the batteries to allow them to like recharge faster and also extend their life so that you could actually get um over like 5,000 cycles out of a battery 
And I mean, that's basically a 10 year lifespan. That's actually kind of good okay, for electric battery uh, before having to replace it, which, you know, spoiler alert, that means the car is over at that point. Because, <laughs> I mean, if your electric battery costs like $20,000 and your car costs $33,000, guess what? Boom. Just trash it at that point. Pretty much. Pretty much. Costas is saying, do you know anything about electrics while crimping? You normally have to remove a part of the plastic of the wire so it makes a nice contact. These idiots haven't removed the plastic, so it didn't make any contact. <laughs> I tried to see that picture you sent me earlier. Wow, so those guys, yeah, they're really, um, that's great. I mean, even, even <laughs> I know you're supposed to take some of the plastic off before you crimp the wires. Yeah, like, if I know this, how did they not know much. this? Professionals. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to say to that. Just That's just one of those things that's common sense. Uh, if you don't have that, which some people don't. It's weird, though, Costas. I mean, I've been in countries before where... <laughs> The people are poor. They want to make money. When someone comes to them and says, can you do whatever? Can you dig? Can you put in an in-ground swimming pool? Yes. Can you make a house? Yes. Can you do anything? Yeah, I drive. Yes, anything. Whatever you say. Because all they see is money coming out of you. You're, it's flowing out of you. <laughs> and then it flows into them. And they're like, yeah, anything I have to do to make that money flow from you to me, I will do it. The sad part is, you know, have they ever, really the big question, not to ask them, can you do this? Say, have you ever built a swimming pool? No. Okay. Do you have a plan on how to build one? Dig a hole? I don't know. <laughs> you know, you see what I'm saying? So when you're, when you're looking for a mechanic... Or you're looking for uh, anybody to do anything, right? The best way to do it is to talk to other people and say, do you know somebody that does good work in this area? Can you recommend somebody? Or if you go to the mechanic directly, you say, hey, um, do you have any references? Do you have another person that's work you've worked for that you can... Like, I can talk to them on the phone or something? Because if you just go to somebody... I mean, you don't know. I had a guy a long time ago in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we went to him. Terrible. He would break stuff on purpose. Yeah, he would break stuff on purpose. He would fix one thing and break two other things so that he knew that you'd be back the next week for him to do more work. And yeah, it was horrible. He was like a total ripoff artist, and I wasn't, I'm not. Some people, you know, some people say that and they don't really mean it when they say it. Like, ah, because the person, like, charged them a lot of money. Oh, they're a ripoff artist. No, 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 no. If you break stuff on purpose <laughs> so that people have to come back uh, the next week to get that fixed, uh, that's called you're, you're basically permitting fraud or something on them. Yeah. All right. So any other things happening? Chassis was talking about the buzz idea, I guess. Mm -hmm. He says, I personally don't like that it's actually not a bus. has nothing to do with a T1, no box or engine, no split window, mm -hmm. different interior, something kind of sad. They should make a water box or revival. <laughs> revival. I mean, it's kind of funny. A few years ago, one of the guys who was high up on the Vanagon list for a long time, I don't know if you guys uh, think it was this guy named Tom Forehand, which some of you guys probably have heard of before. And he's a nice guy. But he sold a company and got a lot of money, okay? Um, and when he did that, he told me, he's like, I'm moving to China, and I'm going to try to see if I can find a place in China that can make Synchro Westies. Okay, this was his idea that, you know, China, of course, they're making all kinds of vehicles. They make, they actually make vehicles that look like other vehicles there. When you go to China, you can find a car that looks like a Jeep. Or you can find a car that looks like, you know, pretty much a lot of other, like a Lexus or something like that. But it's not a Lexus. It's an Exilus or something. You know, I mean, it's like the Chinese version of a Lexus. And so I guess he was thinking, hey, if they can do that, they could make, right, a knockoff version of a Westie Vania. But I never, thankfully, I guess, for the best, I never heard anything about that 
project. I mean, it's been like a long time now. Uh, and if Tom's watching this and he's got his Vanagon Synchro China edition ready to come out, then I apologize, but uh, <laughs> I spoiled that right then. But, uh, you know, I mean, it would be very, it's like basically it would be impossible for a Vanagon to come back out again today. You know, even the buzz ID, if you look at it, it has an actual nose on it, <laughs> even though it doesn't have like a motor there or other things. It has a front to it. Why does it have a front to it? Because of crash testing things and trying to be safer and all that stuff. So, I mean, the Vanagon had its day, the bus had its day, and, you know, we enjoy that stuff. And, you know, I I don't think bringing that, that day back um, is possible. Okay. I mean, it would be nice. I would like it, but it's not really. I don't think it's possible. Steve okay. says completely automated cars are still not allowed in Canada. Okay. Indigenous says interesting point about the autonomous driving for the elderly comes at a cost. How is who is to blame in the accidents? They are mm -hmm. testing vehicles in Arizona and California without a person in the vehicle. Yeah, I mean that's all part. That's all for the lawyers to decide who's in who's in trouble. I would say it would be the company that designed the cars and the software and that kind of thing, most likely. I mean, it's definitely not the person that's sitting in the car because they, they haven't know. did anything. They're yeah. sitting there, the computer's driving them around, and they're just along for the ride. So I feel like the company would get more lawsuits, really, because uh, yeah. the program, the AIs and stuff for driving. Yeah. So I mean, this is America, so, you know, of course, there's going to be class action lawsuits. And if you've ever rode in a in an autonomous car, you will get two cents, and the lawyers got fifty million dollars, and then each person gets two cents. So you know that's how it works. Yep. <laughs> right? Aren't they great? I love class action lawsuits. It's They're the best. Basically, not even worth it. But, uh, I mean, it's not worth it for us, but if you're a lawyer, you're like mm, fifty million dollars. <laughs> you know, money vampires. They're drooling about that. Yeah, everybody else, meh. But it keeps the companies, you know, on their toes and stuff. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure, like I said, the companies that design the car or the software, they will probably have insurance to deal with those situations, I would imagine. Billy Shepard is here. He says, late. What are we talking about, putting a hot tub in the Vanagon? I mean, uh, sure. Did you see the If we can figure out how to do that without, like, every time you step on the brakes, the water sloshes <laughs> to the front. Honestly, I personally <laughs> think whoever's in it would just go... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen these movies where they have this limo, and then it has like a hot tub in the back, and I'm sitting there going, "That's not gonna go." go how well. does this work in real life? Like, not while driving. Maybe it's just like they have it closed, right? and then when they get to their location, they're like, "Okay, guys, pour in my limo." Yeah. <laughs> my I mean, it has right to here. be. This is, I mean, physics, right? Stationary. Physics is a thing that works, or and doesn't work in some ways. And believe me, I have walked so many times with a pan of water. <laughs> And then you stop, right? What happens? I mean, yeah. So, Basically. but Billy Shepard, if you can figure out a way for the water to stay into the hot tub, I'm ready to go for it. I'm ready to do it. I even have an inflatable hot tub right over here that we can use as a test thing. Bro. <laughs> I want to do that now. That's actually a nice hot tub, too. Uh, Billy wants to know if you saw the picture he sent you. Oh, uh, the picture. Yes, I did. That, that looked like crap. <laughs> Sorry, I, Billy. Uh, I can't. I don't know if we should talk about it on the show or not. But Billy had bought a clutch pedal that from a company that will go unnamed. Ooh. That uh, was supposed to be refurbishing it. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know about this situation or not. But the Vanagon clutch pedal, the hole where there's like a pin that pushes against the master cylinder, that can get worn out over time. And then when you go to push the clutch pedal, you'll feel like this kind of play in it. It's not engaging good and stuff. And sometimes Billy's was making a squeaking noise. So he wanted to repair it. He bought this refurbished clutch pedal from this company. And basically their idea, I think, was pretty good, which is to um, drill a whole lot bigger and put a brass bushing in there. Okay, that sounds like good. And then the brass bushing would go back to the original size. But what he got was something that looked like, like the whole either the hole itself had ovaled out, and they just shoved a brass bushing in the middle of it and called it a day, 
or they drilled it out, but they didn't have a branch bushing that was big enough to like actually go out to the right size. So like you have this whole bushing and then on the hole, you can see the holes oval shaped. The bushing is circular. So there's like some air gap on either side of the bushing. So he called them up. They're going to take it back, but they should never have sent it out like that. That was pretty much garbage. Yep. 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 Not from us, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> We're not perfect though. I'll tell you, we're not perfect. We, you know, we have things that happen sometimes. Chris Snyder is here. With. Says hello, Ken. Glad to see you have an ear infection, so everything's sounding strange. No, that's because I'm talking like this. <laughs> no, it's not. I hope you get better, Chris. Sorry about that. <laughs> and joke. then Indigenous Pathways said, "Have you heard about the new GoSD engine management system? Three thousand dollar parts. Do you feel like being a test mouse, putting it into your van? Me, no thanks. Over maybe in five years after the bugs are out." Yeah, I mean, by then, all the parts in that system will be probably not available anymore. And so I, I, I understand what they're trying to do in um, because some of the bounty gun stuff is getting hard to get, I guess. I mean, right now, for the 2.1 liter, you can get brand new distributors. We sell them. You can get a brand new wiring harness. We sell them. You can get rebuilt computers. There's no real shortage of them. So pretty much, and brand new injectors and stuff, pretty much everything in the system you can still get as either a new part or a rebuilt part that's in nice condition. Um, and it's not cheap. If you go through the whole system, it's, you know, maybe, I don't know, two grand if you bought everything at once. Most people, they go buy one thing at a time here and there. So their thing, three three $3,000. And they've been having bugs, like you're saying. They had a weird bug where instead of doing what I thought they should do, what I would have did from the get-go, which is have, like, a sensor wheel behind the um, the big pulley, right? That's what pretty much everybody does, like Ford for their, for their engines I've seen. And a lot of other, even Volkswagen, I think, has it on their newer engine systems. They had this weird unit that like went into the distributor hole and like um, it was had this little head thing on it, and that was like your crank position sensor. Um, and then they were having problems with it, and so then they wound up going to the gear behind the pulley. That was the last version of the engine management system. Somebody mentioned it on the show before, so I got interested in it and looked into it. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really see how it's any more reliable or better than what we've already got right now. I really don't. I mean, the the Digifont system is a good system, and it's you pretty much know like all the quirks of it. Um, so the only thing it doesn't do that I wish it would do, well, a couple things. I mean, for them, I think why they're going to this new system is actually for themselves. They have like a set, kind of a selfish motive for it, which is most likely has to do with anti-knock. Okay. Because when you jack a motor up to the sky, a 2.3, a 2.5, or whatever their biggest motor is, and you do not have a knock sensor on it, it will blow up. Like pretty much 100% guaranteed. At some point, there's going to be a condition where you're driving it, you're going up a hill, it's loaded down with a whole bunch of crap, and it's going to detonate and ping and all this other stuff. And then they're going to get a phone call. Oh, my! I burn a piston. Okay. So I think their new system, really the main thing of it is they want to be able to, you know, sell these juiced up water boxers that they do sell without that phone call. So this new system has a knock, has knock sensor in it. And, you know, that would protect the motor from grenading. <laughs> but uh, as far as if a, a stock engine 2.1, I don't really see a whole lot of point. Okay, that's my... That's my ramble on that. Okay. I mean, and I don't see a three thousand dollar point, believe me. That's a lot of money. Billy says, I have no problems with my early injection. So what mm -hmm. if it's old technology? I'm old technology. <laughs> I mean, it's tested and the quirks are well known. So 
Um, and really, you know, it's cheaper even still. If, if their system was somehow less expensive than what's out there right now, it would make some more sense that way. But it's not. It's more expensive. Um, it has OBD2, but OBD2 is only as good as, like, the stuff behind it. Like, in other words, uh, I do her car, OBD2. Her car is OBD2. Okay. So her car throws me a code, and I look it up, and it says, this sensor is having a problem okay so you would think okay i'll just go replace that bam okay no 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 i never do that i put that code into the computer into google i put beetle 2001 beetle p0 1506 or something and it comes up with all these people who have had the exact same code and they're telling me yeah that's because it needs a new water pump or it needs a new timing belt or it needs this or that Okay, so, you know, the problem, OBD2 is good in that it gives you an idea of what's going on, but you have to also be able to interpret it properly. And so the only way that I found to do that consistently is to, like, see what other people are experiencing, like the, the knowledge base. So their system, that you would have to build that. Okay? You would have to build that. In other words, you know, Joe Blow is going to get this code, and then everybody is going to sit there and go, what's that causing that? Is it a bad wire? Is it a sensor? Is it the motor itself is turning into a pile of garbage or whatever? And, you know, until they build that knowledge base, too, which takes five years, ten years. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's, uh, yeah, it's questionable. So I'm going to get off that rantification. Billy says, um, unless Billy pushes me back into it. Leave them stuck. For as long as you can, as you is can. my thinking. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, we still have it. I mean, there's even people that rebuild the throttle bodies now. They put new bushings in there and clean them all up and make them look nice and basically take them back to new. They're not cheap, but they're not ridiculously expensive. And just to be honest with you, I mean, some I've ran into some throttle bodies that are worn out, but most of them are not. So... Digis says, I have a GW 2.3 engine. If you did, would you get it for the knock sensor? I mean, the only way you can prevent it otherwise is to always use premium fuel. Okay. And then you want to also make sure about your timing. Okay. Uh, and then you want to make sure you're not overloading the car. Do not overload the car. So if you did all that stuff and it's a 2.3 you might be okay if you're, you know, low. If you're putting regular gas in and loading it up with you and like seven of your closest friends and all their stuff and things and going up a mountain, uh, then you're gonna have problems. So, so it's up to you. If you feel more safer with that, um, I guess you can go with it. But I don't know. Other things I've seen they've done over the years. They they do stuff which is good. I like new ideas. I like people trying things and seeing what's going on. But, you know, it's like you're a beta tester, basically. It's a lot of money to be a beta tester. And then if you have a problem, um, it seems like they try to get out of it. <laughs> like it's always your fault in some way, shape, or form. So, whoops. Did I, did I say that out loud? Well, I pretty much did. <laughs> Sorry. If I'm wrong, let me know. If you've had, like, super great experience where they've been like, this is totally our fault, and we're going to do whatever it takes to make it right. Uh, nobody says that but me, I guess. I uh. <laughs> I'm, like, a terrible business person because I always help people out. All my other friends, like Bob Donald's my good friend for years and years, he was, he was not like that. Okay. Oh, and he's like, that's how you have to be. You have to be a businessman and do business and stuff. And I understand what they're saying because people take advantage of you. But I don't actually care about that. <laughs> I care more about the people and keeping the vans on the road than I care about the money. Sorry. Okay. Hope that didn't crush anyone's dreams. Envision says, I use high octane only. Regular okay. resist the mechanics, so timing is good. Okay. Moderate storage, but nothing super heavy. I agree, beta tester. Thanks for your input. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a beta. And I mean, that beta test has been going on for a while. I mean, I remember when 
everybody got into that back like 10 years ago. So, I mean, it's been a while. And I think this idea of the fuel injection system is coming out of that, you know, that they had problems and issues and they're trying to address it. So, I mean, that's good. Uh, I don't know if this is the ultimate solution. Not. Okay, let's continue on. Process was talking about, I guess, the same thing. He said, I agree, the worst is to tune them because they're not built for this amount of power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, every, back in the day, they used to put these big engines in bugs. Okay, They used to have 2.3, 2.5. I think you still build bug engines like that. Okay, And they never lasted, but a lot of that had to do with, like, it didn't help that they were air-cooled. Okay, when the air cooled situation, you got a lot more expansion and contraction things going on. You got a lot more wear and tear on the engine itself. And then when you're popping like a 2.5 or 2.3 or something in there, um, you're basically pushing everything to like 120% or maybe 150%. And then some guys would put like superchargers on. And all this other stuff. And I mean, those things would go, they would be they would be fast and they would get stuff done, but they would only make it like ten thousand miles. And then it'd be over. They'd have to start over. I mean, it was nice that the motors were super easy to rebuild and stuff, but and the guys knew that when they did them. You know, they're like, hey, this ain't gonna hold up, but it's gonna be fun while it lasts. Costas wants to know how many miles per gallon on the two point three. Oh, that's a good question. I actually don't know. So I will refer that to our friend there who has one. <laughs> a normal van again, I mean, you're looking at, it depends. Like city driving could be 16. I've seen 18 in the city. And then on the highway, sometimes you can get above 20, which is kind of nice for a brick. For a brick that's going 65 miles an hour, that's not too bad. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, he says it's like 15 to 17. I have no Nokian 2 15 tires and raised with GW lifting springs. Okay, so it's higher, too. I mean, it's funny. Back in the day, they used to have this Project Zwo body kit. I don't know if you guys remember any of that stuff. And Project Zwo was a company in Germany that made all this aftermarket stuff for the Vanagon. And so they had this body kit that, and it like made the front more aerodynamic. It had like a little skirt down at the bottom that was even more aerodynamic than, you know, the one that they have on the later vans. And they had like an aero bumper in the front, uh, and some other things. Maybe that little, that that little uh, grill spoiler and some other things. And they're like it reduces the drag coefficient by blah blah blah. And they actually were took it to a like a wind tunnel and tested it and everything. I'm like, man, these guys are serious. But I've never actually seen that kit on any van in the U.S. I've only seen it on, like, at meetups in Germany and stuff. So I probably never made it over. It was, like, super expensive, too. Like, the body kit was, like, I don't know, three or $4,000. And back then, that was that was ridiculous money. Nobody was going to spend that on a van again. <laughs> Not today. People drop... Like twenty grand, like it's candy on the gun. <laughs> oh, I, never mind. I got some stuff. I just got. Let me show you guys something real quick. Billy says I might buy a throttle body from you as soon as this dash is back together. Okay. All right. I'm gonna show this as soon as I show it. It is on. They're on the website. Oh boy. Okay. As soon as I show it, most likely they will completely evaporate and be gone. I don't know if I'm ever going to get any more. Do you recognize this? This is not part of a Stormtrooper's armor Armor from Star Wars. <laughs> this is, the, you haven't seen this before because this is part that's been broken on your van from 1998. This is that little piece, okay, that's behind the sliding door that everybody calls me about. Do you have this piece? Heart number, blah, 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 blah. Wow. I'm like, no. <laughs> or I do have one, but it's this part's broken. It's all cracked or something. 
All right, so this piece here, we have this on the website. We have two. Boom. Look at it. It is Volkswagen. It has part numbers and logos and stuff and things on the back. It's not fake. Okay. I'm saying that because there was fake stuff out there. This is not fake. This is for real, Zoys. It is on there. Okay. I have two of them. All right. Let me continue with this other piece. Okay. I'm just letting people know. I talked about this last week. And they didn't show up right away this week. Because this lady at FedEx had to teach her her job of how to import items into the U.S. That this is her whole job, right? I mean, you know it's bad when the customers uh, have to train the employees of another co uh, of a smell company. This, smell it, just smell it. Uh, it's got that new plastic smell. It's got that resin, that beautiful resin hooker. Mm. You see what this is? Okay, this is also like the other part. I think this is before the sliding door. So like between your front wheel arch, underneath of where you fill the gas. Okay, this is the other piece. We had the part before the sliding door. We had the part after the sliding door. Again, look on the back. It's got part number deals on there. It's got Volkswagen logos on there. Oh, it smells so wonderful. It smells like resin. It smells like it just came out of the mold at the Volkswagen factory thing. It even says Germany on it. So instead of West Germany. Ooh. So, you know, it might be recent. We don't know. So I have two of those as well. And they're on the site. They are white because that's how they actually came originally. Uh, you can paint them any color you like. Purple, green, orange, maybe rainbow. <laughs> if you like if you like that. Uh, so go for that. Like I said, two and two. I kind of expected them to evaporate off the site last week, but maybe people didn't know about it. So now you know again. And I actually showed them here. They're here. They're real. Uh, in two years from now, someone will watch this video and they will ask me, Do you still have that? Do you still have part number? Blah, 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 blah. Like, nope. Nope. Because, boom, these people bought them. These oh, lucky, yeah. lucky people. And I mean, I'm not even making a lot of money off of them. I'm not like trying to rip you off. Just trying to get fair price for them. You know, these parts, again, this is like I'm showing you the the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail and saying that's like 200 bucks. <laughs> right? And you're like, dang. I'll definitely buy the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail for $200. Didn't even have to go on an Indiana Jones I didn't even excursion. have to like, yeah, do that movie thing and like have the book swinging <laughs> pendulum blades and stuff, trying to chop me and stuff. <laughs> nope. You just had to like call me or go to the website, boom, push two buttons. There you go. <laughs> Yep. It's not, not, not as much of an adventure, but... <laughs> Alright, do we have any stuff and things on that? Billy wants to know... Find out about those stock 15-inch wheels if they'll work with big brakes. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. If Billy wants to know about... Alright, so here's what's going on with the big brake situation. I know Billy's going to cry right now. I got two orders for big brakes this week. I got excited. I'm like, dang, people getting for reals and stuff. So I went to order them from my supplier... They're like, we don't have rotors right now, so and we won't have any more rotors until the summer. I'm like, the summer? What does that even mean? So, and I even called them about it yesterday. I'm like, what is happening? Uh, we're trying to source parts, but we don't know exactly when we're going to get some. So, we're not trying to lead you on about when it's going to be here and all sorts of stuff. So for right now, I'm going to be putting the big brake kits in the out-of-stock category. I checked around. I sent messages to everyone I could think of that had big brake kits. Nobody has them right now that I could find. I didn't actually send a message to Small Car, um, but I sent a message to pretty much everyone else, and they either responded and said they didn't have anything, or they didn't respond at all, which usually means they don't have anything. Um, so, sadly, 
I will check into that though, Billy. But I guess it kind of depends on which uh, big break kit we're going to use. So, the so guys that I've been buying big break kits from for almost 20 years, they don't have nothing right now. And they won't have anything until the summer. Summer in air which, quotes. Air quotes, which for, with them can translate into either never or next fall when nobody wants them or something dumb like that. Allison says, by the way, how much are you selling the window seals, windshield, and back barn? Yeah, it's on the website, man. Website. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think the back one is around fifty nine, I think, and the windshield one might be similar, somewhere in that range. I mean, the prices have went down a lot, um, just because we've gotten some nice deals on them from uh, some of our suppliers. So I'm trying to pass that stuff on to you guys. As much as I possibly can, um, but yeah, check it out on there, man. Uh, it's use this right here. Button, press button, button, button. <laughs> <laughs> Just like people call me on the phone, like, "Hey, what's going on? Hey, um, how many quarts of oil does it take to change the oil in a Vatican? Like. Have you never heard of Google search? Or have you never, don't you have, do you have a green Bentley mag? That's the first thing I ask. Do you have a green mag? No, I don't have one of them. Okay. Then I'm like, Google search. <laughs> no. I actually tell them. I, I tell them. I help them out. But is that really my job, right? Am I like, oh, thanks a lot. Okay, bye. I click. Like, what am I supposed to be? The repository of all Vanagon knowledge? <laughs> Then I'm just, they're supposed to call me up. I mean, I need a one eight, I, I need a one nine hundred number for that. Hello, boys. How many quarts of oil does it take? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only 99 cents a minute. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Five dollars for the first minute, 99 cents for each additional minute. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know what kind of oil goes in a transmission? Mm -hmm. Call and find out. Yeah. <laughs> That's honestly the creepiest thing ever. <laughs> yes, and I would probably have people calling me every day on that on that line too. The wrong kind of people, I'll tell you that. <laughs> they don't want to know about. Cars. But they call me all this time about this stuff. It's stuff they could easily look up. And I understand if you, there's some reason why you can't like look it up. But I'm telling you, in our day, those reasons are usually bad reasons. Like. Uh, my computer's broken right now. I've had people tell me stuff like that. My computer's broken right now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I guess that could happen. Um, that's probably the best excuse I've heard for why they didn't just look it up themselves. I mean, if they're calling me to like, hey, I want to buy the oil filter from you and the oil. Tell me how much to buy and the stuff, and I'll buy it from you. That's kind of fine. But just like, hey, um, I need to know things. And you have to tell me the answers to my questions. And then I'm just going to say thanks and hang up. Like, okay, that's nice. Appreciate that. I mean, the thing is, and you, even if you don't know it, they're on the phone, so they can't see you Google searching. Yeah, I mean, if I don't know it, I'll just Google search it and look it up. Yeah. And stuff. I mean, the real and it's funny, too, though. I mean, here's people. So there's people that ask, call me and ask me these mundane questions. Then there's people call me up and they act like I have memorized the entire wiring diagram of the Vanagon. They're like, Ken, I'm in the engine bay right now and I'm looking at wire number 67 and it's blue with a red stripe. What's that go to? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I have to look it up myself. Why don't you look it up in the wiring schematic or something? Oh my gosh. Like, um, our, you know, pin number 53 has a blue stripe with a red. What happens if I just push those two wires together? Would that be good? Like, I don't have an I, I have no idea. The real information repository is Google. <laughs> like, I would have to stop what I'm doing, go to the book, look it up, call you back. And, see, and then try to, like, look through it and see, you know, what's this hook to? What's that hook to? Call you back. I mean, I don't know this off the top of my head, man. Come on. I'm not like a, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm not that good. 
I appreciate your faith in me that way. <laughs> that I could. I'm like a uh, idiot savant with the Van Gogh and Wagner. Uh, totally like number 22, but totally, totally 22. All right. She doesn't get that reference. <laughs> oh, get up later. Rain Man. Okay. <laughs> Rain Man reference. Oh, my God. All right. Does anybody have any questions before I do any more terrible Dustin Hoffman impressions? Oh, Indigenous was saying if you go from... Uh... 14 to 15, 16 inch tires. Should okay. the brakes be upgraded to a larger size given the increased tire size? Okay. It really has to do with your rolling diameter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you go with your rolling diameter, I actually, when I put a 15 inch rim on a van, I try to like get the tire to be a lower profile a little bit so that the rolling diameter is similar. So that way you don't throw your speedometer off and that other stuff. So if your rolling diameter is similar, then your amount of actual stopping things that needs to happen is pretty much also similar. So you shouldn't really need to upgrade your brakes. Okay, I would say the only real reason to upgrade brakes is if you are upgrading to vented brakes, right? which the big brake kit has vented brakes. You actually are driving in mountainous terrain with long winding downhills and stuff like that. Or you have like a large amount of weight in the car that's more than like normal. That would be pretty much it. Like the stock brakes are great as long as you're not going down like winding mountain roads and you're riding the brakes. As long as they're installed properly. I had a long conversation with... Another shop this week, they said, we don't even sell any of the big brake kits. We sell none of them. Because I called them to see if they had any. They're like, no. He's like, we don't even sell them. Like it, Because they felt like that the stock brakes were good. <laughs> and they're like, most of the time when people think they need big brakes, it's just because their stock brakes are not installed properly or not adjusted properly. And I actually tend to agree with that to tell you the truth. If it's a stock, you know, motor and everything else, if you have like a more souped up motor, I mean, again, you're still trying to stop. It's pretty much the same amount of weight and different things. So anyway. Billy was saying nobody else seems to ever have them either. I can't remember what them was supposed to be. I just bought The some big break it. Oh yeah, that, that. I it's so some, hit and miss on them, Billy. It yeah. really is. He says he bought some and, sound editing stuff mm -hmm. so you should put on your site. Okay. Yeah, send me a link to it, and I will check it out. Um, yeah, the big brake kits, I mean, they're super They're expensive. Then they're very heavy. And then it's like if you did buy a bunch of them, like say I bought 10, where am I going to put them? Okay. And I don't have enough room for all these things. Then I, I've just tied up like thousands and thousands of dollars just on the speculation of when, you know, people will want them at some point. Um, it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of speculation and money sitting there not doing anything for you for like months and months and months. I mean, I would hate to have went into the winter this year with like six big brake kits on the shelf. Because, just to be honest with you, no one wanted any until, like, last week. <laughs> so, I've been sitting here, like, tying up thousands of bucks. And I'd be paying interest and all this other stuff on this stuff just to let it sit here. So, that's the big problem. All right. That's just part of the fun of having a Vanagon store. <laughs> In the wintertime... Uh, you know, you can't eat, I can't eat any of this stuff. I can't eat brake parts and whatnot. I don't eat food. And food costs money. And food costs money. And so in order to eat food, we basically go into debt in the wintertime. Yep. But then by, you know, probably April or so, it's, we're back out of the hole again. <laughs> so, a lot of businesses are, are run that way. Yep. Okie doke. Don't want to give away too many secrets to my <laughs> success. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have any questions? It's actually about time to be over. Can't believe we managed to go squander another hour 
on Terry Hatcher and also uh, other things. Uh, Steve was saying, when I had my first van, we had no internet on phones. And then Indigenous said, California has wind... I'm not sure if it's windy or windy. Windy! It's definitely windy. I remember us driving in on that. That was bad. Windy Mountain Road, so I will consider, like, the bridge or whatever. Yeah, I mean, like I said, really, you're trying to avoid the fade thing that can happen where... You know, the brake fluid boils into your in your hose and turns it into an air instead of fluid. So, um, but even when you have stock brakes, I mean, sometimes the whole reason why that's happening is because they're dragging and stuff. And, you know, it needs like new calipers. So, I mean, one of the first things I do whenever I get a van is like go to the brake system. And recently, every single one I buy basically needs all new calipers, rotors, pads, wheel cylinders. Like, I just do all that stuff. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to take any chances on any of this brake stuff. If it's over, been on the van for five or six or seven or eight years and it's been setting, it's probably bad. And usually, you know, like we had the one van I just sold not too long ago, it was all frozen from setting. Sat for about 10 years. Everything was frozen solid. Couldn't even move the van because the calipers had frozen. And the sad part was they were actually rebuilt ones that weren't old when it got sat there. Like they were pretty much brand new rebuilt ones. And they sat there for 10 years and froze up solid and were bad. That kind of sucks because it like feels like a total yeah. waste of money. It is a waste of like, money. Like you spend all this money, you get your thing rebuilt and like whatever yeah. to get it in good condition. And then yeah. it just like wastes. If it sets, if it sets, man, you got to you either use it or lose it. Right? You either use it or lose it. I've known people that's put hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles on their Vanagon. Didn't barely have any problems with it. I've known other people that's had problems and problems and problems and problems. But a lot of times it just sets. They use it as like an RV. And that's kind of the worst way to do it. If you at least can drive it like once a week, it's better than it's setting for six months. Costas is like mine was standing for nineteen and they were not solid. Lucky? Yeah, he's lucky. Like, I mean I, yeah. it could be partly his uh their environment, you know. That could I mean, also have we live in South Jersey, which is also known as the swamp of Dagobah. Yay. <laughs> and it used to be a swamp. Then they filled in some of it and turned it into farmland then they decided that was dumb and let it all go back to swamp again <laughs> so we're in the swamp era again um, and yeah stuff you know, like it just stuff like it, it depends on your climate you know i mean people drive here from california their van is like totally rust free and beautiful and within like six months they drive back to my shop and they're getting rust on it and different things because of the climate you know we don't have this nice like desert climate or whatever. I know Costas is living in a uh, like near the ocean and stuff. That's never good, but who knows? Billy wants to know: Should I change my master cylinder while the dash is out? Yeah, if it's if you don't know the history of it, I would say yes. If it's been replaced recently, then you're fine. If it's, I mean, it's not hard to replace it with the dash on. It's it's really it's slightly easier without the dash on, but not that much easier. So it's up to you, Billy. I leave that to you. If you know the history of it and you say it was replaced like four years ago, it's probably still fine. If you don't know the history of it, I would replace it. Mm -hmm. Costas says, luckily the climate is good, a few kilometers far from the ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're lucky that you have good weather or whatever. Yeah. Here, it's gone like this. <laughs> Yeah, this winter was pretty bad. Like, it's pretty a lot. Bad. And everyone is getting sick left and right. And, like, we're, <laughs> I may or may not be having a relapse. And it's just, like, a living nightmare. It's, uh, it's really annoying. I don't know if I'd do that far. But it's, yeah. Like I said before, it's been frustrating because I have some some uh, projects that we're trying to do. And to do them, you kind of need the weather to be halfway decent. Yeah. And it hasn't been that. Pretty much every time that we're like, oh, let's do this thing. The weather's like, haha, no, you can't do this thing. Snow. Yeah. Rain and snow. Pretty much. More rain, more yeah. snow. 
I mean, <laughs> it's like March now. Hopefully, flooding it's coming things. to like an end, and then yeah, it'll yeah. get warmer, and flooding, we can actually flooding. get stuff done. Yep, yep. That's the plan. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for today. If you want to buy these beautiful pieces of Volkswagen Vanagon history, go to the website. They're on there. So if you go, if you see this video later on, like Saturday morning cartoons, okay, you go over here on this side, you're going to see another video you can watch. If you go over here on this side, you're going to see a little button you can click and take you to the website where you can buy stuff to say thank you to us and thank you to your van because your van needs stuff. And it would love, it will love you for it. Believe me, it will love you for it. Uh, you need to spend more time to spend inside watching Terry Hatcher. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Now Terry, now uh, Indigenous is gonna have like a Terry Hatcher marathon oh boy. on his uh, on her new show. Which oh. I'm telling you, if you can watch that show, Van Therapy, without being uncomfortable, I will. I don't know what I will do, but I will pat you on the back and say you're a better person than me because I'm telling you, I like Terry Hatcher. I tried to watch that show and I could I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i have mental issues that need to be resolved it's very possible but so anyway have a great day guys get more smiles around with your van hopefully lord will we'll be back next friday again for another uh live stream and in the meantime um you know think about some questions and things you have and we'll be glad to talk about them next week and leave us some comments if you liked it give us a thumbs up if you didn't like it big thumbs down it doesn't actually matter i get good points out of it either way so <laughs> i don't really care and but i do like the thumbs up that's like emotionally terry has talked to me about this <laughs> that helps my inner self to grow uh, uh so <laughs> so if you give us thumbs up we appreciate that and like share subscribe all that good stuff all right guys have a great weekend we'll see you on the next video Bye.